Hello everyone and good afternoon and thank you all so much for joining me on our 13th Advent Day. And today it, we're reverting back to where it all started for me. We're going to do macrame, but with a difference, we're going down the wire macrame route today. And before we delve into the 13th calendar box, I'm just going to show you what we're going to need for today's hour in case anybody wants to work along with me. So we're talking about macrame, wire macrame. So we need if you have a small or a large macrame board. Okay, so for today, because we're going to be making little sections of macrame, I'm using my small board. So you need a small macrame board, or if you don't have a macrame board, a, a black board or a colored board with a couple of bulldog clips, that will do the job. But if you've got a macrame board, even better. And we don't actually need very much. We need three gauges of wire. And there's a bit of a clue to the product in door number 13 we're going copper if you don't have everything in copper you can use silver you can use gold that's that's the joy of today's product is you can use any color it goes with it perfectly so the three gauges of wire we need we need 0.4 we need 0.6 and we need 0.8 okay so nothing nothing too difficult 0 0.8 0 0.6 and 0.4 and then findings wise we need your choice of clasps so we've got bolt rings we've got a toggle we've got lobster whichever you prefer we need some shepherd's hooks because we're going to be making a part of a pair of earrings. Selection of different sizes of jump rings, but I will be going to show you, if you don't have the jump rings that you need, I'm going to be showing you how to make our own on the bail making pliers. And then we have some head pins because obviously we're going to be making earrings and things, so we need some head pins. And other than that, that's it. That's completely all we need. So a nice empty board today. So without further ado, we will have a look in day 13. And I'm absolutely thrilled because we're getting a strand of gemstones today. So my last couple of items, we've had little findings or we've had little motifs, but today we've got a strand. So we're going to go to door 13, which if you caught myself and Eleanor on the show this morning, you will already know what we have. But this is beautiful. Look at this. So when you do get a strand like this, it opens up so many possibilities. So we have got a strand of crawberry, crawberry, that's a new one, strawberry quartz. So we've got two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. We've got 25 absolutely beautiful, color matched perfectly, strawberry quartz. So this is what we're going to make. So on my left, we've got a set, a complete suite, We've got a necklace, so you can see the macrame sections that we're going to do today. We've got simple rosary linking with jump ring embellishments. Now this same little motif that we're going to make, you can transform into these cute little earrings, making a little loop. So I'm going to show you how to make those. And if we have time, uh, as I mentioned with Eleanor on the show, I'm going to show you how to do some little Mobius rings to make this really beautiful little bracelet. So that whole suite and I used every single bead of those 25 in that strand. So as you can see, it goes a long, long way. So we won't touch the gemstones just yet. We're going to hit our macrame. So I'm going to close up door 13 and put this to one side. And it's a long time since I've done wire macrame on the show. So this was an absolute joy today. So, so when I got the strand, I had so many possibilities. We could have gone down the seed bead route. We could have gone down the nutting route, but I thought, no, I want to do macrame. And I've called this suite Turkish Delight. And I just think that strand there at Christmas, when you have a box of Turkish Delight as an after dinner little treat, it is that perfect wrist. That's like that rose color. It's absolutely beautiful. So I've gone with copper wire. So we're going to start with setting up our macrame board. So as I said, I'm going to be using the smaller board. And I'm, because I'm going to be doing more than one motif at a time, I'm using the board vertically. But there's nothing stopping you doing little sections, little mock-ups horizontally, but you'd only have room there for one motif. And that might be a bit of a waste of wire. So we're going to do it vertically. Okay, so unusually for this piece of macrame, we're not going to have one lazy strand going down the center. We're going to have three. And the gauge that we're going to use for those uh, lazies are your, is your 0.8 millimeter gauge. So what we need to do is we need to take off three pieces, length of the board, and probably about an inch, inch and a half overhang. And we need three of those sections. So that's one, 
and then two, and then three. Okay, so we've got our three sections. Next thing we're going to do, we're just going to straighten and soften that wire ever so slightly. It doesn't have to be exact, but just run it through your fingers and warm it through and straighten up your three pieces. So that's one, two, and then our third piece. And that's probably the most difficult part of today's technique, so actually is straightening the wire. It's a lovely technique, and as I said, because we're going to be making little sections, when you have a spare hour, you can make two or three. You can go away or carry on with another project and then come back to it, make a few more motifs, and then you're ready to make your piece of jewelry. So we've got our three pieces, get them the same length. And at the top of your macrame board, we're going to place the three sections through one slot at the top. So just going to go, let's go along to the left a little bit. Okay, so we're going to place our three and try if you can to keep them side by side rather than overlapping. And all we're going to do is just going to push those three wires over the back into position. Now because we're using point eight, you don't have to do the attachment wrap. That's perfectly strong enough to sit at the back there. And then what we're going to do is we're going to do exactly the same at the bottom of our board, but we just need to make sure that all of these three pieces of wire sit next to each other, there's no overlapping. So what I tend to do is take the middle wire first, which is this one, place it in the slot, and then fold it over the back. And then I take my right hand wire, nice and parallel, same slot around the back, and then my left wire, keeping it parallel underneath and over. So if I flip it over, you can see now that we've got one set of three wires and one set of three wires. Now this section's a bit long and it might catch, so I'm just going to cut those off like so. Okay, so we've got our three wires and just run your fingers up and down and just making sure that there are no crossovers. That seems to be okay. And don't worry if there's little bulges down the side here. Once we start to do our macrame, that will tie everything in. So. For each of your little macrame sections, you're going to need your 0.4 millimeter wire. So just unwrap this. And you need a length, I would say about 60 centimeters. So it's not a huge amount. If, you're, if you find that um, you might want a bit more, it's, it's 0.4 millimeter wire, you get 100 meters on your reel, so you may as well cut off a, a little bit extra. And we're going to be doing square knot macrame. We're not doing twist with wire, we're doing the square knot. And for each of your little sections, you're going to need to make 15 square knots. So I'm going to make two little sections on this tutorial. So we've got our piece of wire, and again, just straighten it, run it through your fingers. You should only need to do it a couple of times with your 0.4 millimeter. We're going to take our wire underneath all three of our lazy strands. And we're going to bring the two ends of our 0.4 so they meet. Pull the two wires up. And you probably need to do your first knot, if you're using your macrame board, three squares from the top. So I'm going to use the slots either side, like so. Because there may be some of you who are watching that haven't done macrame before. So if you've not done macrame before, I'm throwing you right in at the deep end using wire. Don't be scared. If you just follow the, the tutorial and then Go after the tutorial finishes, if you go back and have a go with cord, with your S-long cord or your nylon cord, get to grips with the technique and then come back to the Y. This is, this is probably somebody who is um, quite apt at their macrame. So I'm going to take the left side of our wire and we're going to make a curve and we're going to place it around and over the top of our three lazy strands. So this in effect, if you look, is a letter D. And then we're going to take our right cord, which we've got hooked in, and I'm going to lift it and I'm going to drape it, staying on the right hand side, I'm going to drape it over the top of that horizontal wire. And I'm going to find the end of that piece. And can you see we have a horizontal wire and three vertical. I'm going to take this wire underneath where all four of those wires cross. And then I'm going to lift it up over the curve of the left hand wire. For the first knot, I always place my finger over the top where we're gonna start doing our macrame and that just stops it from moving because we need to keep both sides 
of the wire the same length. So you're just going to pull that up so it meets at the top. Okay, so that's half of our first square knot. So we're going to do the second side now. So it's exactly the same as we did on this side, but this time we're on the right hand side. So not a letter D this time, a letter B. Okay, so it's a D on the left side and a B on the right side. So we're going to take our wire, we're going to do the curve over the two, three lazy wires going down the centre. Then we're going to pick up our left wire, staying on that left hand side. We're going to go diagonally underneath all four wires where they cross over the top of our curve. So that's one square knot. Okay, so we're going to do another 14 of those. So what I normally do when I'm counting macrame is each time you do half a knot, you count it. So we're doing 15 square knots, so that's 30 moves. So we've done three, and we're going to go under now. And don't be, don't be upset if when you're doing your macrame, especially with 0.4 gauge, inevitably you will have wire that snaps. And um, I'll talk you through later on what to do if that happens. So we've done two. And that's two and a half, so that's five. And then we're going to do six. I have a strange analogy when I'm doing wire macrame, is I, I talk about fruit. So the first knot we pull, we get to the size of a tangerine, roughly. And then we go down to the size of a pea, and then we pull nice and tight. So if you do it in those three stages, so orange, uh, sorry, a tangerine, and then a pea, and then the final pull, you can guarantee every single time you get the same knot. Okay, so that's one, two, three, four. And the way you can tell how many knots you've done is if you look down this side, can you see we've got a letter V pointing to the left? So we've, that's our first knot then that's our second, then our third, and then our fourth. So you can see these little letter Vs pointing to the left, okay? And you also, you have a little raised wire on the left-hand side, and we've got one, two, three, four of those. But I tend to decide which side I started with, which was the left, and then count the points. So we've done four so far. And then we're going to go underneath. So that's nine, so that's nine halves, so that's four and a half knots. That's our five. And as I said, we need to do 15 for each motif. So we'll whisk through these. So that's 11, 12. I always find that wire macrame turns day wear into evening wear. It's very elegant and once you get the hang of your tension when you're using your wire it sometimes when you finished your little piece and you look back at it it looks very machine made it looks as if it came off a production line but as I said I've been doing macrame especially wire macrame now for over 10 years and it's still to this day I'm so enthusiastic about it and I just love it and when you add that little extra detail using wire it just takes your macrame to the next level So let's see how many we've done so far. I have great difficulty in talking and counting at the same time, as you've probably noticed. So let's see how many. I'll do a couple more and then I'll count the Vs. So you can see, just make sure as you're doing your, your knots that you don't get any of your three lazy strands twisting. And these seem to be doing quite a good job. So just spend that extra few minutes just making sure that your lazy wires are nicely aligned before you start because you don't want your wires twisting halfway through because then you'll lose this uniformity in your macrame. Okay, so let's see how many we've done. So we've done one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So we've got three left to go. So you could probably, once you get the, 
the hang of the, the whole wire macrame, you could probably make these little motifs in a quarter of an hour. And as I said, if you make lots of them and then join them all together to make your piece of jewellery. Okay, so that's our 15 knots. Okay, so that's one of our motifs. So all I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut our wires so just a couple of inches either side. Leave that as it is. And then what I'm going to do then is just push those two little wires out of the way. And I'm going to take my next piece of wire. And again, same length. And then I'm going to make another. So if you work, if you were good at, uh, you were clever with your measurings, you might even be able to get three motifs out of your three sections, but I'm just going to go for two today. And again, exactly the same start. So I'm going to do the left hand side, letter D, and then your letter B. And always hold on to the Y with your index finger, just to make sure that you're nice and parallel. So these look all parallel. And you need to leave between your motifs six centimeters or six, well, six squares on your macrame board or six centimeters between your motif sections because we're going to be doing something with those shortly. So we'll just do our second motif. And as you're working with your wire, if you notice that when I've tied the knot, I run the wires through my thumbs and this softens the wire and it also warms it up so it makes it less prone to snapping. So that's four. Feed that through. And then five and six. I do get lost sometimes when I'm macrameing. It's very therapeutic, and especially when you're doing bangles or choker necklaces with this type of knot. It just becomes second nature, and you can have TV on in the background or listen to music or something as well. It's, you can't get very distracted by this. It's quite simple. So that's five. six so you can see now how it it looks very structured and so obviously you've got three pieces of point eight as your lazy strand so that's 2.4 millimeters of your thickness going through the center and then you've got your point eight so you've got over three millimeters worth of wire thickness so you get a really nice strong structure and this is why this type of um, technique is really nice for bangles because you can manipulate it on a bracelet mandrel and you know that it's going to fit onto your wrist and it's going to keep its shape so I've been jewelry making now for nearly 13 years and I can't I don't know what it is but I can admit it, I can't get to grips with wire weaving. Our talented jewelry maker, Alison, for example, and Claire, they are second to none with their wire weaving. And I just, there's just something about it. I just can't, I just can't seem to grasp it. Chainmail is another one as well. I, th I think maybe it's a patience thing. But for me, wire macrame, it's very similar to wire weaving. So um, I can, you get the same sort of effect and... Uh, and it's just it's just lovely it's a lovely outcome at the end so i will persevere with my wire weaving it's been my new year's resolution for many years and it hasn't come to fruition yet so we should nearly be there by now so once you finish the tutorial if you as i said if you look back on how to start with your first square knot and if you've never done macrame before definitely have a go with cord it's exactly the same technique but you're just using 
a thread rather than wire. But as I said, I have thrown you rather in at the deep end, unless you're um, a macrame expert, in which case you shouldn't have a problem. So let's just count the Vs. So we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. We've got one more to go. So we weren't that far off. That's one and two. Okay, so that's our two little sections, each of which we've done our 15 square knots. So I'm just going to trim the wires off. And then we can take the whole lot off of our macrame board. So flip it over. I'm just going to pull the wires and do the same with the top. Okay, and we can take it off and we can start prepping our motif sections. So what we're going to do first is we're going to dispose of our working threads. So if you look at this one at the bottom here, can you see that we've got a little loop at the bottom and the wire is coming from within the loop. Okay, so if I go, if I try to wrap that wire around, it will, it will, it looks awkward. But here we've got the wire within the knot, so we're going to cut that wire as close as we can to the macrame, like so. And then we're going to flip it over, and we're going to do the same. So I'm going to pull the wire nicely towards me. It's within the loop on this side, so we know we're on the right side. And I'm going to go in and just give it a little snip. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to give a little squidge just to that end section. We don't need to do this end because there were no cut wires. So we're just going to go in and give it a little squidge. And you should be able to run your finger over the top and not feel any scratchy bits. So that side's good and that side's good. Okay, so that's our first motif section. So we do the same this end. So find the loop where the wire's coming out of. Let me just pull that last one a bit tighter. There we go. So the wire is coming from within the loop, so we're going to cut that nice and neatly there. Flip it over, pull the wire towards me, it's inside the loop. I'm going to cut that off. And then we're going to go in with our flat nose pliers, just that last little section. And again, just run your finger. That's perfect. Perfect. Okay, so we've now got our two little macrame sections. So what we're going to do next is we're going to cut through roughly in the center of your two macrame sections, like so. And then we're going to do the same this end. So leave inch and a half at that end. And then we're going to do the same on this end. So again, inch and a half. These will be cut quite a lot shorter, but it just gets rid of some of the wires. So I'll just put the wires to one side. Okay, so one of these I'm going to keep for the earrings, but I'm going to show what we do on, on the necklace. So what we're going to do is we're going to offer our little macrame section up. Now for this, I'm going to use something called flush cutter pliers because I want to get right in to the right in tight to these wires. So we're going to place our wire on the board. And can you see, um, I'm lying my macrame section, not the wires, but the macrame section on one of the markers on here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut one square along and cut all three wires. Okay, so now when we hold it up to our board, we've got a centimeter of length. I'm going to flip it over and we're going to do exactly the same. So we're going to take all three wires and cut them through. So from now on, we're not going to do any cutting. It's all going to be manipulating our little section. So what we're going to do is I'm just going to take in my finger the right hand wire, pull it out ever so slowly onto the other side, do the same, flip it round, pull out the right hand wire, flip it over and do the same. Okay, so we've got three wires each end with our macrame section running through the center. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the middle of the three and using my round nose pliers, Sorry, my flat nose pliers, first of all, is I'm going to take that wire. I'm going to use my finger, actually, it'd be easier. Is I'm going to fold away from me. So you can now see that that middle wire is coming out at a right angle. I'm going to take my round nose pliers, and I'm going to start at the end. And I'm going to curl the wire back. 
so the loop sits within. Can you see with the loop, I've curled it back on itself. Now the two wires I'm going to push down so they at right angles, at right angles, and then I'm going to do exactly the same. But this time, instead of doing it front to back, as I've done with this loop here, that will move because we've not done the other end yet, so don't worry about that, is we're going to go right to left. So I'm going to exactly the same position. So I'm going to take my wire and curl it and curl it and curl it so we meet in the same place. So we've got one horizontal flat loop, I'll turn it 90 degrees, we've got the second loop, and then we're going to flip it over and do the same with the third. So I'm going to go in, I'm about a centimetre from the edge of my round nose pliers. So I'm going to keep rolling and rotating so I have the three loops. And I just need to just give a little bit of space for that central loop. So I'm just going to come out ever so slightly and just manipulate that so it's nice and straight. There we go, perfect. Okay, so if I lay that down flat, you can see that we've got two of our flat loops either side, and we've got one of our straight loops coming out sideways, if that makes sense. So I'm going to flip it over, and I'm going to do exactly the same the other end. So my middle wire, I'm going to fold over, and I'm going to curl back. Like so. So I've got my enclosed little loop. The right hand and the left hand wires I'm going to push out at 90 degrees and then I'm going to curl those back as well. So we're going to go right in and curve like so, just flatten that out. And I'm going to do the other side, right hand side, give it a nice little curve. So we now have our loops. So now, because we've got the loops either side, that middle loop, which is standing vertical, is, has trapped itself. So I'm just going to go in and just make sure all those loops are sitting how I want them to. Do the same. They look like some sort of insect, like dragonfly larvae they always remind me of. Okay, so that's one section. Okay, so I'm going to do exactly the same. This, so I'm going to show you what we use the first one for in the necklace, and I'm just going to do the same with these. This I'm going to show how to do the earrings. So again, place your. There we go. So you've cut your square on your macrame board. Okay, then start at one end, pull out. To right angles your left and right wires. Do the same with the other end. And then we're going to take our middle wire, we're going to push it away from us to a 90 degree angle. And again using our flat nose pliers, we're going to curve back. So we get a nice neat loop. So that's our first loop. Flip it over do the same, so we're going to fold the wire away from us, back in, and then we're going to curl it back to make our loop. So we've got the two vertical loops either end, and then we're going to take our right hand wire, and we're going to take that loop and curve it into the loop that's already there, and we're going to do the same with the other side. So keeping it nice and positioned. And we're going to curve that over into position. So that's one end. And just go in and straighten if you don't think they're sitting right. That's what's really nice about 0.8 millimeter wire as well. It's it's quite strong, but you've still got that malleability. So that's one end. And then we do the same with the second. So you're going to go in. So it has the look of wire weaving, but um for people with less patience, like myself, it just um, takes away a bit of the pressure. Okay, so we're going to curl that. We've got our two little loops, and we've got our central. So I'm just going to pull that out ever so slightly. That's 
better. Let's make sure it's sitting right. Yep, I'm happy with that. Okay, so they're exactly the same, but what we're going to do, we're going to keep one for the earrings a bit later on. Okay, so we've got our motifs. Now for my necklace, I made 10 of these little sections, and now we can incorporate our gemstones. So I'll just put my macrame board to one side. So you can use head pins if you want to, but I'm going to use the 0.8 millimeter wire. Or you can use the point, what should we do? Let's have a think. Now I'm going to, what shall I do? Now I'm gonna do some rosary linking. So I'm going to use the 0.6 millimeter. And what we're going to do is using our round nose pliers. And if you go on to my first advent calendar which was the 4th of December the whole hour was all about rosary linking and bead caging and that sort of thing so if you after to this tutorial if you'd like to go back and have a look on the 4th you'll see how to do the rosary linking so I'm just made a rosary loop at one end a wrap loop I'm going to pop on one of my gemstones and then we're going to do the same on the other end so you'll see You'll have a reminder about how much space to leave either side for your links and your wraps. It's all on that first tutorial. Two, three. So I'm going to do a few of these. Trim off the little tail. And do another one. So you're not actually joining these together because I wanted to incorporate another bit of texture with some jump rings. So there's no rosary linking on this, it's just rosary links. You don't have to do a chain. So all of my rosary links, I do three coils, as you'll probably hear on the fourth tutorial. Okay, and then I'll do my next. Again, leave enough space to do the same amount of coils. Perfect. That's two, and then I'm going to place my little section just there. And I'm going to do another two strawberry quartz. It's the first time I've walked, worked with this gemstone as well, and it's absolutely beautiful. It's that colour. It reminds me of a child going to the sweet shop and asking for ten p of mixed sweets, and um, there'd be a sweet called a cola cube. And it reminds me of cola cubes. It takes me right back to my early childhood. Okay, so pop those in, make sure the coils are facing the same direction. And then we'll do our last one. We've got enough wire left. I didn't add any seed beads or spacer beads or anything. I just wanted the, the gemstone to be the star of the show. And I think, as I mentioned in the introduction, copper is the perfect choice, but I've, I've had a look and this actually works beautifully with silver and gold and even antique bronze if you wanted to go very autumnal with the, with the gemstone. Okay, so we'll close that. Okay, and then we've got, so we've got two, one, and two. So this is, the, this is the setup that I did for my necklace. So I did one motif, two gemstones, one motif, two gemstones, etc., etc. So I've gone into my stash. I'll still keep that one for the earrings. And I've gone for the jump rings here. Now these are three millimeters inner, five millimeters outer diameter. And all I'm going to do is, I'm just going to join all of the little sections together. So a quartz with a quartz. Join those together. And then what we're going to do is we've got three loops at each end of our motif and I'm going to suspend the jump ring from the middle loop. So it might be easier for me to do that first. So I'm going to take my jump ring, 
place it through that middle loop and then pop it through my strawberry quartz. So you can see now that's attached nice and neatly to that. We'll do the same the other end. So this time I'm going to attach it from my motif first. So again, I'm going to find that middle loop, which has got, there's plenty of room to manipulate your jump ring. And then I'm going to pop my first quartz on, and then I'm going to pop another jump ring with my second, like so. And then all you do then is you just continue with this little technique. I'll just bring the, the necklace across so you can see. So that's the completed necklace. So you can see we've got two motif, two motif, all the way around. And this was actually long enough not to need a clasp as well. So it's an over the head, but if you wanted to make a shorter necklace or you didn't want it as long and you wanted to incorporate a clasp, you can do so on your completed necklace, okay? So that's all you would do is you just repeat that. You've got plenty of beads, as I said, you've got plenty of wire. So what we're going to do next is we're going to make the earrings. So what we're going to do for this is we're going to take this little motif and we're going to make a little, just going to slowly manipulate it into a curve shape. Okay, so just gently manipulate it. Okay, just gradually. Get, and what you want to do, you want to get to the point where your two middle loops meet in the center. Can you see nice and neatly in there? And then what we're going to do is on each of those inner loops of the group of six, we're going to pop on a jump ring. So either side, so I'm going to take a jump ring through the left middle loop. And I'm going to take a jump ring through the right middle loop. So there's still plenty of room, like so. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to, you can see, and you can now see that there are the two jump rings that we've just added. So what we're going to do is we're going to take one more jump ring and we're going to take it through the two beads we've just added. So one and two, just hook those together. So one and two. So you can now see that I've, I've caught the two jump rings that I've just added to the motif with a third, close that nice and tight. And then what we're going to do then is we're going to do another wrap loop. So I'll cut another piece of my 0.6 wire. Again, we're going to do the start of a wrap loop. And before we close it, we're going to take that jump ring, that the third jump ring, the single standalone jump ring that we've added. We're going to trap it inside that loop. Okay, so there's our two loops of our motif. They're the first two jump rings we added, and that's the third to group them all together. Then we're going to go in, we're going to tie our three coils, our obligatory three coils. We're going to close that off. Then we're going to pop on one of our quartz. So you need one quartz per earring. I'm going to slide that down, finish our wrapped loop, make sure we leave enough space, which we do. And we do our three coils nice and neatly. Pop that in position. We're going to trim off our excess wire. And then we're going to find our shepherd's hook. Again, I've gone for, stayed with the same color. And when, when I'm using a shepherd's hook, the first thing I always do is I just give the end of the tail just a little flick out and that just stops, it doesn't guarantee it stops it, but it, 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 it slows down the movement of your shepherd's hook and it might stop it from coming out of your ear if it gets caught in your hair or in a jumper or something like that. So a little tip, they just give you a little tail a flick and it's, it makes it more difficult for the earring to be, come out of your ear. I'm gonna pop it on our shepherd's hook and then we're going to close the door. I'll just lay that down and you can see now that we have our little earrings, so the same motif, but we've just got that little loop at the bottom there. With the earrings that I've made 
for my demonstration if I just show you what I've done which you can also do now is I've flicked out the outside jump ring so I can do that now for you so if I flip that sideways I'm going to take the two loops from the left and the right side and I'm just going to flick them out that's okay. so you can see they they stand proud if I show you that way that you can see it's just another little bit of interest it reminds me then of a, a like a Greek urn so pop those out flat do the same with the other side so pull one loop out that way and then pull the same with our second loop and I'll just go in and hold both of them within the jaws to manipulate them so you can now see we've got the four little loops coming out the side we've got our jump rings attached to our middle loops to make our little earring there so I've used three jump rings in the one I've just made with this one here I've used one larger so again you can just get a different look but all from the same little motif okay so that's your necklace if I bring that across okay same motif exactly the same as your little loops to make your earrings with and again these are 15 square knots okay so lastly I thought I would show you the bracelet if I just bring that across this has got a little toggle clasp and what I've done here using up the remnants of my strawberry quartz is I've done what's called Mobius rings okay so what I've used on the Mobius rings is I've used this tool which is a six step bail making plier. So you've got one, two, three, four, five, six in different millimeterages. For this, you will need your 0.8 millimeter, your 0.6 won't be strong enough. So you're just gonna take a little length of your 0.8. And when in fact, what we're going to do is we're going to make our own jump rings. So I'm going to use, if you count them from small to largest, I'm going to use size five. So what I'm going to do so I'm going to hold in the palm of my hand. I'm going to take a short piece and I'm going to take it across the bail making pliers, holding it with my thumb on bail number six. And I'm just going to wrap the wire around nice and tightly around bail number five. And you should get seven or eight jump rings. I mean, if you want to, if you have jump, large jump rings in your stash, by all means, please use those. Okay, so we've got a nice neat coil. Slide that off. And then using my flush cutter pliers, I'm going to cut the jump rings. So all I'm going to do is, lie, is wire by wire, I'm just going to cut. So, and for each Mobius ring, you will need three of these large jump rings. So you're just going to go through. You can if you want to, I shouldn't do this, it's a bit naughty, but you can go through and cut them all, <laughs> okay? So there you've got your jump ring. So we're going to need three for our Mobius ring, which is this little section in the middle. Then you're going to need two of your ordinary jump rings, and then you're going to need either side of that a couple of your quartz. So to, to close our Mobius ring, we're going to take the first jump ring, and we're just going to manipulate it closed using our flat nose pliers. And what I tend to do is you can see where the, the cut is there, if you look on your back of your pliers, you see this little curve. What I do is I clench the jaws around the cut and give it a little squidge. And that's work hardened that little section and it'll make it harder for that to open. Then while that's flat on the ground, I'm going to take jump ring number two. I'm going to open it just ever so slightly, about three or four millimeters. And I'm going to go down and scoop up the jump ring that's already there that we've just closed. So I'm going to go from the top down, hook it, then close my jump ring. Again, going in and giving a little squidge. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to place the two jump rings flat on the mat on top of each other. Okay, nice and neatly. We're going to do exactly the same with jump ring number three. So we're going to open it again, three or four millimeters. Same thing, we're going to go up, down, scoop, underneath so hook underneath scoop up we're going to then close that jump ring give it a bit of a squidge and then we need to manipulate them so that all three jump rings sit on top of each other like so so that's your mobius ring now i i always use three but you can use four five six however many you want to build up your layers and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to take an ordinary jump ring 
And again, while that group of three is on my mat, I'm going to take an ordinary jump ring. Again, this is a five millimeter. I'm going to scoop down, pick up all three in situ, and then I'm going to close that jump ring. I'm going to lay that down flat. Then to take my second jump ring, again, keeping that nice and flat, I'm going to go down, scoop underneath all three, bring it up. And now, because you've captured those three jump rings in that Mobius ring state, they can't dislodge, they can't move out of that little section. So what we're going to do now is, because we've been using our point eight, I'm not going to use wrap loops anymore, I'm going to do eye pin loops, which are a bit simple. So I've got my end here. What I'm going to do, about a centimetre from the end of my wire, I'm going to fold 90 degrees. I'm going to curl back. And just before I seal that loop, I'm going to take the smaller jump ring from the end and I'm going to close it up. And that's now got that nice and suspended. Then I'm going to pop on my jump ring, my um, quartz. Like so, and then I'm going to get my cutters and again about a centimetre of wire. I'm going to use my flat nose pliers and I try to make sure that my two eyes of my head pin are in the same direction so I like to keep them vertical. I'm going to fold over 90 degrees and I'm going to curl back like so. Okay, so I've not done wrap loops with this one because you can do that with 0.8 millimeter wire, but you can see that I've got a head, an eye pin loop either side. So what we're going to do next is we're just going to do the next Mobius ring. So I've got some pre-cuts here. So we take our first jump ring, we're going to close it without anything in it. Give it a squidge and then lay it down nice and flat. Take our second, open it ever so slightly, go from the top down, hook underneath it, lift it up, close the jump ring, give it a squidge, and then just fold one of the jump rings over the top of the other and lay it down on your mat. Then we take our third, we open it ever so slightly, again from top we go down, we scoop underneath, we lift up the two that are already there, close the jump ring and then we fold that jump ring over the top of the two that are already there and lay them down flat. Now can you see that the, the jump ring I've just added is slightly skew if so it's obviously in the wrong position so all we're going to do is fold it over that's better. So you can always tell straight away if your last Mobius your last jump ring of that Mobius ring isn't sitting correctly that's much 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 better. So we go back to our ordinary jump rings open this one up, okay, we're going to go down, scoop up our Mobius ring and then we're going to offer it to our quartz that we've just popped the loop on. So we're going to catch that inside like so and then we're going to do our second jump ring and get ready with our, we'll use, we'll use this one, this is the wrap loop one that I made earlier. So now we're going to go in, we're going to go down scoop up all three and then we're going to pick up our quartz close up the jump ring nice and tight and what you'll do then is you'll just continue I'll do quickly you'll do one more let's get another quartz let's go back to the eye pin loop again so I'm going to fold over 90 degrees then we're going to do our loop before we close, we're going to pop on our little jump ring from our Mobius ring so you can see how it lies. It's absolutely beautiful. It's, it's such a little motif, but it adds such a difference to your work. And I mentioned earlier that I don't do chain mail, but that is in fact a chain mail technique. So <laughs> I've argued with myself there. Okay, and then we'll pop on our next quartz. And then we'll find the right direction that my previous loop is sitting in. Cut your wire to about a centimeter. Get our flat nose pliers. 
just rearrange our loops so it's sitting straight, fold away, and then we're going to coil all the way back. And then at this stage, I, t I tend to just give that little point where, where it overlaps, just a little squidge like so. So you see how quickly and effective that is. So if I just lay out on my desk what I've made from the strand, and you'll see everything you can you can do. So we've got our bracelet. So that's a little section of the bracelet we made. Just drop that down a little section. Then we've got our little necklace section. And then we have our completed necklace. I've just and then that's the earring that I made there. And then we have our two earrings. So that's what we made from the entire kit. Okay, so we've had made, so we used, bear in mind there were 25 in the strand altogether. So we've got two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 25. So you get an earring set, a necklace and a bracelet for the entire of your strawberry course. So I hope you enjoyed that technique. It went very quickly today. And um, join me on the 19th when it's all about micro kiss cross. Have a lovely afternoon. Thank you for joining me. Take care.